Uh, my name is Kobe Bryant, 17 years old. The Charlotte Hornets select Kobe Bryant from Lower Marion High School in Pennsylvania. Bryant for three, it's going to be a hair ball. Hair ball. It's time to, it's over, it's over. The is safe against uh, the Lakers because of this man, Kobe Bryant, can take over. Oh. It was a hard fought game, and we finally got a championship, and it feels great. 81 point game, 55 in the second. Repeat back to back titles. The LA Lakers, the 2010 NBA champions. Thank you for all the inspiration. You guys will always be in my heart. Mamba out. One man who gives the fans here quite a show is the Lakers' Kobe Bryant. Bryant follows the tradition of Lakers showmen that was Elgin Baylor in the 60s and Magic Johnson in the 80s. Now Kobe's carried the torch into the 21st century and done it with a style all his own. Welcome to the Kobe Show. There goes Kobe, watch this play. The explosion of Kobe Bryant. How did the kid do that? Given the people that they came to see, that's for sure. Entering the 1999 NBA season, Kobe Bryant had begun his rise towards being recognized as one of the league's premier players. In the year prior, he had more than doubled his points per game and time on the floor, carving out a larger role in the Lakers rotation and forming one of the game's greatest one-two punches with the prime Shaquille O'Neal. Becoming a centerpiece on one of basketball's most legendary franchises had resulted in Bryant becoming an icon on and off the court, something that was made obvious when a fan vote had helped him secure his first All-Star appearance in 1998. From late night talk show appearances to Adidas ad campaigns, Kobe was at the center of attention in the sports world thanks to his exciting highlight plays and memorable personality. This was a welcome sight for the NBA, who following the retirement of Michael Jordan the previous year, had been desperately looking for a new era of players to help issue the league into the new millennium. On June 11th, 1999, the Lakers announced that they had hired six-time NBA champion Phil Jackson to become the team's head coach. After helping lead the Chicago Bulls to a decade of dominance, Jackson had vowed to never coach again, leaving the game after the core of his former dynasty disbanded. However, seeing the potential on the Lakers roster, a group of talented players who had been unable to get over the hump in the postseason, Phil was lured out of retirement and Los Angeles was able to secure the final missing piece towards becoming a dynasty of their own. Man, you gotta see so much stuff. <laughs> just pivot work, like, without even having a basketball. It just, you know, run, you know, set a pick, then spin, pivot, go, then stop, change the direction. Like, we, without a basketball. Like, practice layups, without a basketball, it's, it's weird. I learned the spirituality of the game, the mindfulness that comes with the game, you know, understanding how to put yourself aside, how to try to quiet your ego. The new era of Lakers basketball would have to wait, as during one of the final preseason games against the Washington Wizards, Kobe Bryant would be hit by an opposing player's elbow, resulting in the young star breaking his hand. Not realizing the extent of the injury, Bryant had stayed in the game and actually played the remainder of the contest. But when the pain was too much to handle the next morning, an MRI revealed he had broken the fourth capoparo bone in his shooting hand, an injury that would cause him to miss the first six weeks of the season. Despite losing half of their young duo, the Lakers still managed to get off to a hot start, going 11-4 in their first 15 games without Bryant. Since arriving in LA, Shaquille O'Neal had grown into the game's most dominant big man, using his strength and athleticism to terrorize defenses down low. Now in the heart of his prime, his assurgence in the league created a nightmare for opponents, especially in an era of basketball that thrived in the paint. 
Kobe would make his return to the Lakers on December 1st before quickly re-establishing himself in the starting lineup. Playing a then career high 38 minutes per game, Bryant had fully gained the trust of the Lakers coaching staff and now was proving nightly why he belonged in the conversation of the league's top guards. There was evidence of his confidence growing every time he stepped on the floor as any reservations or potential that people had seen in a young Kobe was now melting away to reveal a polished skill set that rivaled the game's greatest scorers. From elite footwork and above the rim highlights to an ability to hit difficult shots that left the opposition clueless, the young Mamba had finally broken out of his shell and was showing the basketball world exactly what he was capable of. This, combined with O'Neal's elite play and Jackson's improvements to the Lakers' game plan, resulted in them winning 67 games, tied for fifth most in NBA history. Shaq had put together what would be the greatest statistical season of his career, averaging 29.7 points, 13.6 rebounds, and three blocks per game on his way to being named the league MVP. Meanwhile, Kobe had taken his largest step towards NBA stardom, improving in every statistical category, including raising his points per game to 22.5 and leading the team in assists and steals. These improvements not only earned him his second All-Star appearance at the age of 21, but it also resulted in Bryant being named to the All-NBA second team and becoming the youngest player in league history to earn all defensive honors. While the Lakers had clearly established themselves as the NBA's best team in the regular season, the playoffs had been a struggle for the franchise in recent years. Since Shaq and Kobe had arrived in LA, the Lakers had put together an underwhelming 14-16 record in the postseason, having their finals hopes ended by the eventual NBA champion San Antonio Spurs the year prior. Playing for a franchise as historically dominant as the Lakers and being a player so obsessed with success that his work ethic had already begun becoming the stuff of legend, Kobe knew that his ultimate goal was winning the NBA Finals. It was the type of thing he had dreamed of growing up as a kid in Italy. And now with all the pieces coming together for a deep playoff run, the Lakers were finally the favorite to win it all. And four teams stood between them and the ultimate goal. Matching up in the first round with the entertaining but inexperienced Sacramento Kings, the Lakers set the tone for the series early, with Shaq continuing his dominant play in Game 1, scoring 46 points and grabbing 17 boards in a 10-point win. However, the Kings weren't willing to lay down, winning back-to-back -back games in Sacramento and pushing the Lakers to a winner-takes-all Game 5. Kobe had been hot throughout the series, scoring over 30 points in three straight games. And with the series returning to the Staples Center, LA was able to put together a 27-point win to close out the series. The second round provided a unique challenge for Los Angeles, with former All-Star and Shaq teammate Penny Hardaway leading a Phoenix Suns team that featured future Hall of Famer Jason Kidd and the talented Clifford Robinson. The Suns were fresh off upsetting the defending NBA champion Spurs in round one, and now had their sights set on ending the title hopes of yet another top Western Conference team. Shaq and Kobe came out strong in game one, scoring a combined 62 points in a convincing win to take a 1-0 series lead. But the Suns would come out firing in game two, with Phoenix having a strong performance from a duo of their own, as Penny Hardaway and Robertson put together a 57-point outburst that had them in the lead with only 21 seconds remaining. Despite only having 13 points on 10 shots, Kobe ended up with the ball in his hands for the last... A little bit about that shot. Well, I just brought the ball up the court and I looked up at the clock and uh, had enough time to kind of keep the floor spread and penetrate, get into the gap, see if I can create something. And uh, fortunately, I hit the shot. The biggest shot of Bryant's career at the time would be enough to swing the momentum in Los Angeles' favor, and after splitting games in Phoenix, the Lakers would close out the series with a 22-point win at home, securing them a spot in the Western Conference Finals. 
Waiting for Shaq and Kobe in the showdown of top teams in the West was a talented Portland Trailblazers team who had managed to put together a 59 win regular season. Led by six time NBA champion and future Hall of Famer Scottie Pippen, who had been a large part of the dynasty Phil Jackson coached in Chicago, the Blazers also featured a pair of exciting young players in Rasheed Wallace and Damon Stoudemire, who had just begun to enter their primes. The group was fresh off eliminating the conference's traditional powerhouse, the Utah Jazz 4 1 and their combination of experience and skill would prove to be the Lakers' greatest challenge yet. While Game 1 was more of the same early success for the Lakers, with Shaq leading the way with 41 points in a 15-point win, Game 2 would be a much different story. In what would be their worst loss of the season to date, the Blazers would see Pippen, Rasheed Wallace, and Steve Smith all score over 20 apiece on their way to a 29-point win in Los Angeles. Portland had just sent a wake-up call to the Lakers. This series was about to be a fight to the finish. The two teams would go back and forth over the next four games with LA taking a 3-1 lead before dropping back-to-back -back games in Portland to force a Game 7. Kobe had struggled to find consistency early in the series, but after a confidence-boosting 33-point performance in Game 6, the young star was ready for the biggest game of his career so far. On June 4, 2000, all eyes were on the Staples Center for what would be the second most watched conference finals game of all time. The type of stage where legends are born for the world to see. With a near impossible 3-1 series comeback on their minds, the Blazers had a clear game plan. Deny Shaq the ball in the post, and when he got the ball, throw as many defenders at him as possible. While it seems like a simple strategy, it worked to perfection, with O'Neal being held to only 9 points entering the 4th quarter. The Blazers had been able to build some steady production on offense, with young all-star Rasheed Wallace punishing LA on his way to a 30-point performance. The Lakers now found themselves down 15 with only 10-28 remaining in the 4th quarter, and it seemed another playoff elimination could be on the horizon. However, in true champion fashion, Los Angeles found a spark offensively when they needed it most, with reserve guard Brian Shaw hitting two clutch three-pointers to slow down Portland's double team. Bryant, who had been a well-rounded contributor throughout the game, raised his defense to a new level, playing a large role in the Blazers missing their next 12 consecutive shots as LA climbed their way back into the fight. With the game tied and only a minute 50 remaining, Bryant would completely take over the game, drawing a foul that led to two free throws and then hitting a move on one of the greatest defenders of all time before pulling up for a tough mid-range jumper. The very next play, Kobe would go right back at Pippen, and this time, it would be one of the biggest plays of his career. Portland has three timeouts left, the Lakers have two. Kobe's lob to Shaq would not only be the dagger that sealed their first trip to the NBA Finals together, but it also represented a key moment that would transcend this season and help form the chemistry that would lead to one of the NBA's next great dynasties. But for the time being, the focus would be on finally achieving their ultimate goal, and only one team remained in their way. Reggie Miller and the Indiana Pacers had always been a step or two away. Whether it was the Jordan-led Bulls, the New York Knicks, or even a young Shaq in Orlando, someone had always stepped between them and a chance at the NBA Finals. Except 2000 was different. After winning 56 games and finishing first in the Central Division, the Pacers had fought their way up the ranks in the Eastern playoffs, returning to their fifth Eastern Conference Finals in the past seven years. Despite yet again being matched up with the Knicks, Indiana would finally break through the glass ceiling, with Reggie helping seal the final game of the series with a 34-point performance and sending the Pacers to their first NBA Finals appearance 
in franchise history. Just looking up, seeing the NBA Finals uh, banners, and you know, seeing NBA Finals on the floor, NBA Finals 2000 on your, on your jerseys. Um, you know, it's a great feeling. It kind of feels like you're just dreaming, really. With the stage set and two teams who had been fighting to get over the hump finally having the opportunity to win it all, the 2000 NBA Finals got off to a strong start for LA. Kobe had come out of the gates hot in his first championship action, scoring on four of his first six shots in the first quarter, but eventually found himself playing a more complimentary role to Shaq, who had a clear advantage inside. O'Neal would be unstoppable in game one, scoring 43 points and grabbing 19 boards on the way to a 17 point victory for the Lakers. However, it was Bryant who would have the most valuable contribution to the game, thanks to his effort on the defensive end. Kobe would hold future Hall of Famer Reggie Miller to a career low 1 for 16 performance, forcing the NBA's eventual all time three point leader to have one of the worst shooting performances in finals history. It was clear that the duo of Shaq and Kobe would be too much for Indiana in this series, and early in game two, Pacers guard Jalen Rose would try to take the fate of the series into his own hands. Rose had broken an unwritten rule in basketball. He had not only slid his foot into Kobe's landing zone, but years later, he actually admitted to doing it on purpose. But playing against him in the finals again, I'm thinking this is before any questions were being asked. So like now you look back at hindsight and I don't think it's cute. I don't think it's cool. I don't think I'm hard because I tried to hurt Kobe Bryant in a, in a game. I'm disgusted by it because, you know, I wanted to win that bad that I was willing to basically cheat to do it. The Lakers would still go on to take game two, but the ankle injury would be one that bothered Kobe the rest of the series, and it would directly cause him to miss the entirety of game three as well. In his absence, the Pacers were allowed to throw more pressure at Shaq, and the void left by Bryant on the defensive end led to Reggie Miller, who had been held to 28 points total in the first two games, to explode for 33 in a 9-point Pacers victory. Well, good evening everybody and welcome tonight, the most important game of the finals. The eyes of Indianapolis are on the ankle of Kobe Bryant. The big question for Laker fans. Will Kobe Bryant play tonight? Well, you need to be 95% to play. Right? Oh. Okay. With 50%? What do you need? 50%. I can change my game. Is there any circumstance that you can envision right now that would keep you from playing? Any snipers in the room? With Kobe back in the starting lineup for the next game, it was obvious that the winner of game four would hold all the momentum of the series making it a must win for both teams. After only scoring six in the first half, Kobe would rise to the occasion with one of the most clutch performances in NBA Finals history, fighting through the pain of a still injured ankle to reestablish the momentum for the Lakers. Picking up his fifth foul early in the third quarter, Coach Jackson was worried that sitting Kobe would cause his ankle to tighten, so he trusted Bryant to keep playing, and it proved to be the right decision. Bryant accelerating to the baseline and hitting the jumper. That's an amazing gamble by Phil Jack. Kobe's starting to get a little bounce in his step here. You can see he's starting to feel much better. Kobe with a great feed to O'Neal. We play two minutes of the second half. Indiana by five. Kobe Bryant cuts it to three. AC Green looking for Bryant, but Jackson has pushed him far from the basket. It doesn't take him long to get into the lane and hangs in the air with another beauty. Despite Kobe scoring 14 points in the second half, the Pacers were still able to tie the game at the end of regulation, meaning the winner would be decided in overtime. Shaq would try to take over an OT, 
but a sixth foul with only 2 minutes and 33 seconds remaining would take him out of the game completely. The rest of the night and the direction of the series would be completely in Kobe's hands. Shaking on Miller and hitting a two-point basket. If you want to be a hero, you've got to take hero shots. Kobe is going to go to work again. Here he is over Jackson. How good is this kid? Shaw running one-hander, followed in by Kobe Bryant. Again, offensive rebounds. The Lakers have a 3-1 lead. Bryant's eight points in overtime were the second most in NBA Finals history, firmly cementing Kobe as one of the game's top performers when the game matters most. Game five would be a slight step back for the Lakers, with Kobe having one of his worst shooting performances of his young career while still battling his ankle injury. The Pacers would pull away in the elimination game with a commanding 33-point win, the largest deficit the Lakers had faced all season, and they would stay alive for another game heading back to LA. Despite the hiccup in Indiana, the Lakers got themselves back on track for game six, determined to avoid another seven game series. Shaq and Kobe would combine for 67 points, with Bryant overcoming continued shooting struggles to seal the game down the stretch with five clutch free throws. After a playoff run that had seen them push to their limits, Shaq and Kobe had finally led Los Angeles to their ultimate goal. The Lakers were NBA champions. We worked so hard, it was a hard fought game, and we finally got a championship and it feels great. Now you, for your 21 years, you said you've always dreamed to win a championship. Is it what you dreamed of? Oh, it's everything and more. I mean, you have to, the Lakers colors falling from the ceiling, the fans going crazy. I got the hat on and everything, covering my throat. It feels great. No feeling quite like this. The 2000 season had been a huge step for Kobe Bryant. He'd been able to successfully make the jump from great talent to great player, etching his name in history and finally reaching the goal of every competitor. He had performed on the game's biggest stage and proved that while he still had room to grow, he was going to be a force at the top of the league for years to come. In the meantime, together with Shaq, the Lakers had proven that they had officially arrived as the NBA's best, and a dynasty was born.